Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Felix. I'm from Queensland University of Technology, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here to present my work on predicting surfs in tennis using style priors. This is a joint work with Disney Research, Australian Institute of Sports, as well as Tennis Australia. Okay, so the task we are interested in here is to predicting the next serve of a player given the, the game context as well as information of the players. So here I'm showing an example of Nadal serving to Djokovic. And I'd like you to take a guess here, which of the three regions you think this serve will land? So how many of you think this will land in region one? A uh, lot of people following tennis. So how many of you think it's going to be region two? And how many of you think it's region three? Okay. So the result here is, of course, region one. Most of you will get it right. So if we look at another example here, it's again in the region one. If we look at all the data from Nadal serve against Federer in the semifinal of 2012 Australian Open, you can see almost all the first serve for Nadal is centered at this region because this is the backhand for Federer. And this is completely different because if you look at Nadal against Djokovic, there's more serves towards this region. So this is also match the description in Nadal's uh, book. He said, if I have to hit the ball 20 times to Federer's backhand, I'll hit it 20 times, not 19. So what I'm trying to say here is basically the behavior of a player is dependent on, on his opponent. And not only opponent, but also the game context. Here I have two examples of, again, Nadal against Federer, but the game context is in the break point. So break point means Federer is now 40 against zero against Nadal. And also Federer here is at advantage. And he actually served to the forehand of Federer. Okay, so the task here is we want to use a large amount of fine grained tracking data to learn such contextual behavior pattern and be also be able to predict the likelihood of a particular serving type. And as I mentioned before, this serve type is dependent on the match context, such as the break point, the condition of the court, and also the style of the server and the style of the opponent. So why do we do this research? Uh, in tennis, there is a large amount of fine grained performance data is being produced almost at every official game because of the Hawkeye system. It can track the position of the ball very accurately and at a very high frame rate. But currently, this technology is mainly used for uh, umpire, ad, ad umpiring decisions as well as enhanced broadcast visualizations. But we believe that there's more knowledge we can learn from such data in terms of planning an upcoming opponent and also provide recommendations to a particular player. We only focus on the serve in this paper, but we do have a, a research papers on, on pred predicting the rallies, predicting the weakness, and also analyzing player behaviors. So here I give you an example of the uh, Hawkeye data. Basically, it can capture the trajectory of the ball and can decide whether it's inside or outside. So the data we use are three years of Australian Open menstrual single, single uh, menstrual single match from 2012 to 2014. In total, we have about 7,000 serves. Uh, there are about 3,600 3, to the uh, to deuce court and 340, 400 to the ad court. And uh, on the bottom right here is an example of the Hawkeye data. Let me just play from the beginning. Yeah, sure. How does your data exactly look? Do you have the trajectory of the it's, ball? It's actually a, a text file. Huh? Then you can't, I can't say much about the data. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. It's about the format, so it's... It's, it's like a text file. A text file describing the trajectory? The encoder in, in a way, so you can extract the position at any given time. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so here is an example of the Hawkeye trajectory. <coughs> The first thing we want to do is we want to discover the, the a serving dictionary of all the players. We want to know what are the common types of serves 
professional player tends to do. Although there are some uh, course description from coaches or players, they tend to use, for example, fast serve, uh, down the tee, kick serve, swing serve, heavy serve, also uh, body serve. But they are quite subjective. And our approach is to, we want to discovering this type of serve automatically from data. So we first separate our serves according to their semantic meanings. For example, we separate our serves according to whether the serve is a valid serve or it's a, a fault. Then we further separate it according to its direction, add chord, deuce chord. We don't flip the serve to one direction because some players are left-handed, so we, we want to capture such uh, characteristics before we are applying the clustering algorithm. Uh, before we can do clustering, we need some way to parameterize our, these trajectories. So a serve basically contains two, two parts of a trajectory. So this is the first part, and this is the second part. Uh, there are many ways to parameterize a trajectory. So for example, we can extract different features from a trajectory, such as uh, speed, angles, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, but we think that uh, a handcrafted feature may not be, su be sufficient to capture all the characteristics of a serve. So instead, we sample uniformly sample a lot of points from the first and second part. And for each point on the trajectory, we include both its position, x, y, z, and its dynamic, x dot, y dot, and z dot. So these are the instant directions, speed, at each uh, point. And finally, we use uh, uh, each u distance to measure the similarity between trajectories. It's basically the mean of the pairwise distance. And once we have the uh, parameterization and uh, the similarity measure, we can apply standard clustering algorithms. We look at the reconstruction error against the number of clusters, and we pick seven clusters. We discover seven clusters on each side. So basically, each type of serve, uh, each cluster of serves are colored differently here. And we can look at the center of each cluster. So we have the center of each cluster here. For example, if you look at uh, the type one here, is not sure if you can see is the blue one here, and that corresponds to the to the serve to the add chord. It's a wide angle with uh, this is relatively lower speed, is which has a uh, more spin. So once we discover this serving dictionary then we can represent the style of a player as the frequency of those dictionaries. It's like the back of words approach. And you can see here are the style vector for each of the players. For example, Murray here, Murray here, he's very likely to use this type 11 serve. And if we go back, type 11 is this green one here. Okay. And once we have this uh, style vector for each player, we can compare the similarity between players. Uh, we use uh, the but uh, charia distance to measure the difference between uh, histograms, and we can, uh, can build a similarity graph. For instance, you can see Djokovic and Federer, uh, these four players uh, tend to have similar uh, uh, styles, and uh, Murray and uh, Nishikori, they have another uh, style. And Nadal here is quite different because he's a left-handed player. It's quite different from other players. Okay, so once we've done that, then we can get back to the classification problem. So the task here is given the game context as well as the style feature I just mentioned above. Uh, we want to predict the serve type Y. And this Y basically can take a value from, the, from our dictionary. So it can be one of the 14 uh, types of serve. We use... Uh, a random decision for us for, as the classifier because it's robust against overfitting. And uh, so we try different approaches. First, we only use the game context feature. But it's, this game context feature is not very discriminative because basically we're assuming a player will always have the same serve if under the same kind of game context. Then also we include the identity of players. So if let's say I have five players, then to encode this identity feature, basically we can use a 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, this kind of feature but there's not much information we can get from such uh, features. And finally, we include our serve uh, feature, the style feature from the server and also from the receiver. It basically allows us to decompose a player into different factors and allows the decision tree to go deeper, which can enrich the feature vector and also allows uh, more comparisons. Uh, so the 
the performance is, so there are seven types of serve for each direction. Randomly is around 14%. Uh, with only the game context, we get about 14, 14%. With the style vector, we can improve it to like 27, 28%. So here I give you some uh, results from our uh, prediction. Here is the global behavior of Nadal, means Nadal against everyone. You can see the, the red one is, is the most likely serve for Nadal, it's to the backhand of his opponent, with 35% of the time he, he's doing this kind of a serve. But interestingly, we found on break point, he tends to do it completely differently. So he tends to serve to the forehand on break point. This also matches the, uh, the video I just showed uh, before. Um, then we can also look at behavior for Djokovic. So that's when he is about to do a break point or when the opponent is? When he, when yeah. So he's losing currently, yeah. yeah. And for, we also can look at Djokovic's behavior. Uh, and interestingly, you found it again, Djokovic tends to do differently on the break point compared to uh, on the normal situation. And finally, we took a look at Federer's behavior against different uh, players. And also we look at different players against Federer. And we found that for Federer, he actually using a very consistent style. So almost all the serving st style are similar when he against different players. But different players are using different strategy against Federer. So you can see it's quite different. And uh, uh, finally, we, are, we also built a, a web application for this work because it can be used for, uh, for coaches to access the uh, the software. So here is a demo of our. So it's a. I record this video because I'm worried that the internet connection w won't work. So you can log in, and there's different functionality. You can load more trajectory data into the system, and you can um, look at visualization. You can pick a player, pick the context, and. Uh, It will show different category of the serves. It's not very clear in the projector, but yeah, you get the idea. And uh, you can look at all those bounce marks of the serves um, and the speed profile. What's that speed histogram? You can tune in this parameter, changing this parameter, and see how it changes. For example, these are the aces locations. And uh, we also have, um, you can also predict their behavior, help them to plan upcoming opponent, for example. Uh, it's not working properly. It's, it's still under development, this, uh, this part. So you can pick a, a scenario, then our machine learning algorithm will tell you the most likely thing they will do. Um, uh, yeah, so thanks, that's the end of the presentation. Um, seven clusters in each zone, so that's around about two feet wide on average. Yeah, that seems like it might be around the range of their standard deviation of where they're trying to aim the ball. Um, if you used fewer clusters, have you think thought of forcing uh, to yes. use fewer clusters? We do try different number of clusters, and we try different. We also try more specific uh, algorithm, but we also look. We we have asked uh, opinion from professional or coaches, and uh, this is the. The, the most meaningful result they, they, they are great with. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Have you tried to use body posture features? Yes, that's the next. Those are pretty good predictors. Exactly, well. exactly. But the Hawkeye data here is only the position data. But that's the next step we'll look at the post our player, and because that's also is more predict, is give it the predictive, uh, I mean features. Yes. Yep. Yeah. No more questions. Let's thank our speaker once again.